just out of curiosity, as we sit here in the awkwardness of this morning, anybody come this far by faith? Leaning on the Lord. This series that we will wrestle with this month is you are worth it. You're worth it. And I wonder, have you ever had a Brian Reeves moment? What is that moment? Lord, what happened? What went wrong? How did I get here? How did we get here? Is this really what it was supposed to look like? I didn't see this as a little boy or a little girl. You had that moment? Just yesterday, huh? <laughs> On your way here. <laughs> why, why am I doing this? <laughs> Is this really what you had in store for me, for us? Our text this morning is the gospel lesson. And the fact of the matter is each and every one of us has come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. And the text is is very interesting as we consider Luke's gospel to us in this 17th chapter. He's transitioned us from Jesus' teaching. He taught us about the lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son. And last week we dealt with the rich man and Lazarus. But now Jesus wants to prepare you for something. He wants to prepare you to teach. But in so doing, he doesn't want you to lose yourself. He wants you to protect yourself. But as he's preparing to send you out, there's some things he wants you to remember because he's gifted you, he's gifted us to do some pretty amazing things. The text opens by saying to his disciples, Temptation to sin is sure to come. It is mind-blowing to me. The number of Christians, and, and this was just confirmed to me on Friday, who approach life with these rose-colored lenses that just because you put Jesus on it, everything is supposed to be a 7-Up pound cake. I don't really like pie, so I would have said apple pie, but stay with me. A 7-Up pound cake. We're supposed to have whipped cream and frosting, and I'm supposed to be this happy-go-lucky kind of person. That ain't even what Jesus just said, did he? Sin and hard times is sure to come. For you and for me, all y'all. This thing is going to be hard, difficult. But are we prepared for that? Sin is going to happen. We live in a sin-filled world. And when you bring sinners together, guess what we're going to do best? Sin. Yep, 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 yep. Even in church. Right? And God says to us, be prepared for that. But listen to what he says after that. But woe to the one through whom they come. Yikes. So, by nature, you're a sinner. But the sin that happens better not happen on your watch. So what does that mean for us, right? You shouldn't be the one to bring sin to the table. If sin happens in a situation... So what do we do with this, right? I hope you came to go to work. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 through 9. 1 Peter chapter 5, if you didn't come to work, we brought some work for you. It should be on the screen. Ready? 
Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Satan wants you. He wants to put you in a position to be the one to bring sin into the world. But as we will discover, it's important for us to know ourselves. Because in verse 2, did you hear how stern Jesus was? If sin comes through you, if you're the one to bring sin to to the table, we're having a party, and you bring sin to the table, What did it say in verse 2? You don't even have to go that far. You can just turn back a page, do a little bit of work. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were to cast into the sea that he could cause one of these little ones to sin. Go swimming with a rock around your neck. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago, right? You want a graphic translation of that or you already processed that, right? (laughs) That's from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you bring sin to somebody's doorstep and you cause them to sin, go swim with that rock. But what we need to understand about the devil, you've heard this saying, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, as George Bush said, it ain't going to happen again. (laughs) Right? Fool me twice, Shame on me. Watch verse 3. Did you hear how verse 3 opens of your text? Pay attention to yourself. Pay attention to yourself. How many of us are in tune, are self-aware? Do you know how you tick? Do you know how you operate? Do you know what causes you to be set off? Can you recognize the cunning ways of the devil. He's a very simple individual. Don't don't get all spooked out by Halloween as you walk in these stores and you see, that ain't the devil at all. The devil is the one that knows that you are about to say, as I have done foolishly, so I start giving the devil that foothold, right? November's coming, December's coming. I'm gonna try to not eat sweets during Halloween. Because the first thing that's going to happen is somebody's going to offer me a 7-Up pound cake, right? (laughs) Right? But do you know yourselves enough? Because the devil is just going to come in and simply place the cake right there to see what you do. And we heard in 1 Peter, resist him. Be alert. Pay attention. Don't be that, can, can I say that with us? Don't be that spiritually stupid. He did it to you once. Don't let him do it to you again because the second time, that's on you. Did you learn your lesson? I'm I'm trying to teach you something. I shared with you last week. Sometimes God lays some things before us to see how we're going to respond. And are we aware? Are, are, Are we spiritually sensitive? Are we just in a rush to hurry up and get this over? Or are we seeing how the devil is trying to use us to cause people to sin? To, to, to spiritually distract us. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 31 through 33. Because it is our responsibility to not only pay attention to ourselves, it says, if your brother sins, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him, and if he sins against you seven times in the day, turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. We have to be conscious of our behavior because it affects one another. Your actions determine how somebody's going to react, whether we like it or not. For every action, there's a reaction, and you don't know how somebody's going to react. But the Bible tells us if your action causes a sin reaction, there's a problem. And I want you to be conscious of yourself, spiritually aware enough that you protect yourselves from the scheme of the devil. Because if we listen to our Old Testament, which we'll talk about in a minute, God sent you here for some things. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 31 through 33. Ready to go to work? There you go. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. 
Give no offense to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in everything I do, not seeking my own advantage, but that of many, that they may be saved. Just because it's okay for you, doesn't mean it's okay for somebody else. We're all on different spiritual journeys, all in different places in our faith walk. So just because you think it's okay to do X, Y, and Z, that might cause your neighbor to sin. And so it is your responsibility as a mature Christian to be mindful of that. Uh Uh-oh, uh-oh, wait a minute. We gotta be in relationship to know that. I gotta spend some time with you. What does that look like? Let me give you an example. Um, Listen, I I know we stream this thing, so let me put this out there. Please don't call me, write me, talk to me about this. Yeah, it was a little scary, okay? So in college, I was going through some fraternity kind of things, right? And during that time, we were, it was strongly suggested, let's say, that you don't drink pop, you don't eat red meat. Listen, I lost a great deal of weight. It wasn't about the fraternity. I was like, shh, I'm on it, right? So after we finished, I kept that going. And then I started this pastor kind of thing. You people eat. I'm telling you, you church folks, good grief. So go to people's houses. What do they got? Pop, red meat. Now, because I didn't eat it, do I not eat what they put before me and cause them to think that they've done something wrong? If you set it out, I'm eating it. Hello. <laughs> right? I don't want to give offense. Let's be biblical. I don't want to cause you to sin. I, let me have it. But, but there we have some practical applications of what that looks like. I don't want to put you in a position that your conscience thinks you're doing something to offend our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and thus putting you in a position like the rich man. And so now we go a little further. Romans chapter 14, verses 13 through 23. Yes, this is a little lengthy. Just stay with me. I'll get you finished so you can uh, go enjoy each other's company. Romans chapter 14, verses 13 through 23. And it says, therefore, let us not pass judgment on one another any longer, but rather decide never to, what does that say? Put a stumbling block or a hindrance in the way of our brother. I know and am persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself, but it is unclean for anyone who thinks it's unclean. Just because that's how you view it, somebody else might view it another way. I'm just trying to help you swim safely, right? I'm trying to help you navigate this life safely. For if your brother is grieved by what you eat, you are no longer walking in love. By what you eat, do not destroy the one for whom Christ died. I'm going to wait just a second. Did you hear that? Do not destroy the one for whom Christ died. Your actions have spiritual ramifications for somebody else. I don't know about you, but I don't want that weight, (laughs) right? So I'd rather talk to you a minute, figure out where we're going to eat. Can you eat this? Can can you do? And it's not just food. So let's not just get stuck there because that's my, you know, easy analogy. I'm just saying. But wherever you are on your spiritual journey, are you in relationship so that we're building up the body of believers so that they can be empowered to do what God has sent them to do? Can we continue, please? I'm just saying, can we give a shout out to the media team? They're rocking the slides. I just want to give a shout out to that. And so as we continue, we take a look at this because the Bible tells us to be alert because your neighbor's sin will become yours. And so what is your responsibility? To rebuke your neighbor. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 11 through 13. It's a little cool outside, so we're just doing some calisthenics to help us warm up. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 11 through 13. And it talks about there in Ephesians chapter 5, I think we're pulling it up just a second. There you go. Ephesians chapter 5. Take no part in the unfruitful, unfruitful 
works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. So, dear friends, as we consider this, this is what I would like to call the Judge Judy portion of the Bible. And she constantly speaks of things. It is very funny to me to watch her speak to things that people should not be doing. And especially to parents who participate in the foolishness of their children. And she will clearly remind you that you shouldn't be doing that. And the challenge with us is we don't like to share with other people what they're doing wrong because we don't want people to think that we are better than them. I'm going to just be very personal with you. It is about 60 degrees outside. You could take a squeegee and wipe the sweat off my arm. I would rather speak the truth to you in love than to have to go join the rich man. For y'all that missed it, I'd rather speak the truth in love than rather go to hell. I know it might be uncomfortable. I'm not better than you. You're not better than me, but I care enough about you that I want you to go to heaven. And so I'd rather tell you this so that we can work this out. And it's uncomfortable because there's always three sides to the story, right? Your side, my side, and the truth. Or as I learned in building this house, there's the truth and then there's God's truth. Because <laughs> you're going to tell me what you need to tell me so I buy some more stuff, right? When do we speak the truth? Because here's the thing. So let me take you back to our Old Testament lesson in Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, and we've discussed this again. It says, write the vision and make it plain. So that those who read it may run. Man, they killing it back there, right? And the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tables, so he may run who reads it. And then it says, wait for it. For it's still the vision awaits at a point in time. It hastens to the end, it will not lie. It seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come and not delay. God has gifted each and every one of us to do some things, but it is the devil's job to slow you down and destroy you and prevent you from doing what God has sent you here to do. And he's sending people to knock you off course so that you don't execute it. And we give the devil an opportunity to do things to us to prevent us from fulfilling the mission and vision that God has sent each and every one of us to carry out. So let me tear this right off, because I I, I hear them, Gloria. I hear them. I hear them. I'm at retirement age, and I just want to go see the grandkids and be slow. I'm going to ask a rhetorical question. How old was Abram (laughs) when God called him? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Right? There's still a vision inside. How do we rearrange our lives to answer God in any station in which he calls us? And what happens is we fall prey to the things that our neighbors are telling us that aren't biblical, and we simply don't want to say, you need to stop by and visit 1 Thessalonians 4.11. That's the polite way, biblical way to tell them to shut up. (laughs) It says, study to be quiet and mind your own business. God has got me doing something right now. It don't sound too good to go to your neighbor and say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, does it? But that's what the Bible is telling us in today's text. And so the disciples like you and I say, Lord, if I had a little more faith, I would do it. I'm not there yet spiritually. And Jesus says, you don't need more faith. The faith you have right now, if you really believed in Jesus Christ, you could tell this tree to uproot itself and it would do it. Do we believe God, yes or no? It's that simple. And then he closes this text in verses 7 through 10. I'll group them together so I can sit down and leave you alone. He says, the problem is you think too highly of yourselves. You think too highly of yourselves. He then goes on to talk about the worker in the field. 
and all the tasks that the worker has to do. And he says, after the worker has finished doing his task, do you call him in and tell him, come to dinner, good job, good job? No, you tell him they got some more work to do. But you, oh, you disciples of mine, you do one thing, we gonna post it on Facebook, Twitter, t- you want everybody to see what you've done. Why do I care that your child went number two at two years old? That's what they're supposed to do. I don't care, you don't need to post that everywhere. Why do I care that you got a certificate? Who cares? Didn't you sign up for the job? Uh, l- let me give a news flash. Your job does not guarantee that you're gonna make a friend, doesn't guarantee that you're gonna be happy all the time. When you sign the contract, your job guarantees you two days a month, maybe one, depending on how you set it up. That's all you should expect. And that's what God is telling us right now. And our problem is we expect God to be some type of magic show. And in Luke chapter nine, verse 62, if you missed it, he said, put your hand to the plow and don't look back because if you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. And so now he's talking about this plow again. Do your job. Very practical. As children of God, the way we protect ourselves is to do our job. That's it. Don't look for a, had a boy, good job. You, you just knocked that. It ain't gonna happen. And that's how we get bent out of shape with our brothers and sisters in Christ because somebody didn't cheer me along the way and we didn't get a participation award. I'm not making this up. I I know you're going to be upset and we got to take care of and everybody gets a trophy. Give me a break. It ain't biblical. Verse 10, so you also, when you have done all that you were commanded. Let's stop right there because many of us don't obey God in the first place. And so we have give God and then we expect him to do all these miraculous things and we haven't even done what he commanded. But he says, after you've done all you commanded, get this, get this, you have worked for the kingdom of God, all you commanded. We are, huh? I know you don't want to say that out loud, right? That's, that's not how you think of yourself. We are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. Can you imagine? That's all you get from God. So what do you think you're going to get from another sinner? You better protect yourself. Don't go in there thinking the wrong thing. All that place promised you, and I'll just use this as an example, is the 15th and 30th. I don't even expect you to come back there and say, good sermon, bad sermon, terrible. Hey, right? That's your job. Do it. Goodbye. Protect yourselves because anything outside of that causes us to sin because we're looking for validation from other sinners. Jesus said, get this together. Every day you wake up, it's because Jesus did his job to experience his grace and his mercy. And so today, I leave you with that reality. We sit here because Jesus did his job. And by his grace, we all have the wonderful opportunity to experience another day to do what? What was commanded of us by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to do unto others as he has done unto us and we would want done to ourselves. Let's do our job and build the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.